fuck aging gracefully. Like, like, is that my mindset now? Like it's the downward thing and I have to try and do it like with a happy heart, like fuck that. And I was like, literally like all I want to know is like how to reinvent my life and be excited about it. Have you ever seen someone living an amazing life and thought to yourself, how'd they get so lucky? If you are not currently living a life that's on your terms, a life by your design, then this podcast series is for you. This is the More Confidence with Luna Guy podcast. And in this special season, I'm going to be interviewing people who are living a life by design, living a life on their terms. And I'm going to find out once and for all if it is just luck or there's something more going on. Let's dive in. Marnie, you've done some pretty incredible things in your life and you live a life that's, you know, on your terms. You've got a book coming out in 2025. Can you tell us about what the book is, why we should read it, and what its main theme is all about? I love just coming right out. Like, let's get to just it. Just let's get into um, it, right? <laughs> let's do it. You know, I, so let me tell you the story of why I wrote it. Um, so I was in, I was in my mid fifties. My kids were leaving the nest. Both my parents uh, were gone. My dad had just died. Uh, my my husband was like, I want to get out of LA. Like, you know, we got to do something. What are we gonna do? And um, so as I do, I start googling. You know, like. Um, transition coaches, empty nest coaching. I start looking for books about transitioning, midlife, empty nest, whatever. And all that I can find are these things that are about like finding a hobby, uh, like getting a hobby, getting stuff that you're interested in, do it with your partner. You know, I was like, I got plenty of hobbies. Um, it was about um, aging gracefully. And I was like, fuck aging gracefully. Like, what, like, is that my mindset now? Like it's the downward thing and I have to try and do it like with a happy heart, like fuck that. Um, and I was like, literally like, all I want to know is like how to reinvent my life and be excited about it and a structure and a process. Like, how do you do it? And there was nothing. Um, and so I ended up, uh, discovering, um, uh, the design thinking method that is first came out of Stanford University, um, and it was originally developed to help uh, people design actual products. It's like that. It's like consultants mm. use it. It's you know, it's a it's a very specific process. Um, and then there was a book about it that kind of took some of those concepts and uh, applied those, but there was nothing in it that really looked at like putting your heart and your soul, the whole of you into it, designing from a place of your, your most essential mm. authentic self versus like your brain, right? Versus what other people think you should do. And in the process of really figuring out my own journey, um, I had this crazy idea um, about maybe I would sell everything that I have and uh, go around the country in an RV and write a book about it. And that's what happened. <laughs> Stop it. And so, yeah. And so every, um, every stop, my husband and I ended up, you know, uh, going through this design process, this life design process. Uh, we ended up selling our house, getting rid of most of our stuff, putting some things in storage, living in an RV and traveling around the country. And the book ended up being really uh, a teaching that design thinking process for real humans, mm. the spiritual approach using seven spiritual questions as a new foundation for defining what makes a meaningful life. Um, and um, I tell my own story of that process through each of the stops that we had along the way. Okay, so so let me just get let me just get this right. You've gone okay, cool, midlife empty nest, you know, like well, kind of like what so many people go through. What like what now? I've spent the last 20, 30 years um building a life, raising children, you know, maybe maybe having a career or or, yeah. or you know, like being married and then sitting there going well, what now? And there's this big empty space, not even an empty nest as well, but like, you know, a big empty space of maybe I don't even know who I am because you've spent your whole life being a mom and, and you've had all of that. You then go look for design techniques, like not life by design techniques, but a, a Stanford 
uh, you know, strategy of actual designing products and you've used that with seven spiritual questions to be able to bring that into a life by design. So it's design when we know we oh, this podcast is life by design, right? We're talking about a life by design. You've actually pulled a product design model and applied <laughs> exactly. it to life. Is that right? That is a hundred percent. That is a hundred percent right. And, um, and it works. Here's the thing. It works. What's really fun is when I talk to people who have MBAs or they're in think they're in a uh, like consulting or whatever. And I use some of these terminology and they're like, wait, that's the same thing. Wait, that's crazy. But yeah, totally. It totally works. And my whole sort of situation. So you said it, you set it up perfectly. So not only did I have all those things, but I got into a traumatic ski accident um, a few days before the world went onto lockdown where I uh, was almost didn't walk and I was told I have to stay in bed for three months and I can't move. Um, and I couldn't do anything that I love to do. I could barely work. I couldn't write. I could, you know, someone told me make friends with the remote. I actually had to use a, like a claw that um, elderly people use to like reach because reaching mm. actually hurt my back. Um, so it was me and the claw and a bunch of people watching vegetables downstairs coming up to visit me. And that was, and I was like, uh, if I don't do, who am I? And that was the beginning of like, I have to redesign this for, on a completely, in a completely different way. Wow. You have to redefine it. So not only the empty nest, not only the pandemic, but an, an, an injury that makes you sit there and go, well, everything that I've known up until date, like up, up to date of who I am and what I stand for and what I believe in has been, well, you know, like, like crumbled. What for you, what, what do you reckon was the biggest belief hurdle that you had to overcome in order to create a whole different life for yourself? Um that, um, well, I, I was, what I realized, so I thought the problem was a lot of different things because it's so mm -hmm. easy to blame other people. But when I got to Isn't the core just... of it, what I realized, yeah, when I got to the core of it, I realized that, um, I was terrified of change and I believed that my surroundings, like my house, my business, my friend, like all these things outside of me were the things that brought me stability and joy and peace. And that is paralyzing, oh. right? To think that your conditions are the things that you have to have to be happy. Um, mm. And so I learned that like, I can do, I can change, I can do anything. And that I had to find home inside myself so wow. that I could be at home anywhere. Mm. I want everybody to hear this loud and clear because it's a message that I talk about a lot in, you know, in my most recent book, Get Happy and Free. It's exactly what the message is, is that we need to move our peace and happiness away from outside of us, our circumstances. It's not about getting everything we've ever wanted. You know, what Marnie has just said, what everybody I want to hear loud and clear again is that we need to move the home internally so that you're at home anywhere you are. So for you, for, yeah. so for you, Marnie, what was that process like? Was it from the design? Was it from the spirituality? What made you shift from the home being external and quite literally as well, actually, right? Like you have a literal mm -hmm. experience of this. What, what, what was the, the, the shift for you that, you know, was it spiritual or was it the design? Was it a bit of both that actually led you back to home within? Oh my gosh. Well, it was a hundred percent both. Right. Um, it was really believing that when I am, uh, when I'm in a place where I am experimenting, right? Like I'm in an, what I call like an experimenting sort of lifestyle where there is no failure um, and I'm testing and I'm trying things out, then I can have more fun in the creation of that, which is, which is new. Um, and so mm. it was like, I had to, I had to almost like, it, it became a must 
to detach from my uh my ego so to speak of what i thought like define me and mm. outcomes that i thought would define me so that i could really have a blank slate um in the creation process because that's really what this is i think that we believe that creation is only for people in certain phases of their life um and that when we are older mm. we're supposed to just like set it and forget it or we have some like time in the future where like you retire or you this or you that and then mm. you start living your life and most people believe that their future has to be just a 10% adjustment or variation of their current life but when you're in your 20s oh. people don't tell you that they're like you can do anything be anything you know like dream the dream right? and then try like, new things go yeah. for it yeah and then you yep. get it like 50 and they're like oh never mind you've had enough now your turn of creating your turn of experimenting your turn of 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 exploring is over you know we definitely get told that we get to that point where there's we should stop exploring. You know, we need to that that settle down, right? I think that in our thirties, I think it happens as early as that, Marnie. Would you agree? Yeah. Like, it's in your thirties, you really got to settle down now. Like, you know, stop messing around and actually actually decide on what you're going to do with your life forever. Uh, well, yeah, it's funny. So I, my adult kids are like getting to thirty, and they and I can hear them talk. They feel this pressure of like. You know, I have to be a certain place in my career. I'm supposed to have my partner. I'm supposed to be thinking about kids. I'm supposed to. And I think that's really insane because mm. we've come so far in so many ways in our society, right? But mm. but the beliefs about what your life is supposed to look like um, may or may not be your true soul's map, your true soul's purpose, right? Um mm. And, uh, and when you are going against the grain, whether it's in corporate environment, whether it's socially, whether it's where you want to live, whether it's who you partner up with or not, um, it's requires a lot of courage to mm. live life on your terms and screw the shoulds really. Yes, it does require a lot of courage and it, it, it forces us, you know, you can take the, you can take the path that's already been written for you. You can do that, which is, you know, as you say, like, go, go tick all the boxes. You can do all of that. If right. those, you know, but, but don't expect the boxes to bring you fulfillment, joy, happiness, peace, and be your authentic self. Money for you. What do you think? What's been the most difficult part of you said about your ego before or your identity? What was the most difficult part for you to let go of, do you think? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, for me it was sort of like a letting a letting go in process, like in phases, like like mm. a lot of things were difficult, but like they happened one at a time. Thank you God. Um so Amen. like, you know, like letting go of my house was hard. Letting go of some stuff was very, very hard. Um, I think letting go of the idea of what my business might look like uh, or what it meant mm -hmm. to be successful in my industry. Um, I realized that I was trying to build something that I never even hesitated for 30 seconds and I'll ask myself, is this what I really want? I just saw wow. people that were like successful, quote unquote, um, like, the, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, uh, were like, Oh, well that's what I need to do. And then I like would scurry around trying to talk to people or find mentors or find someone to help me be like somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I never really asked, is this what I want? And so it was really interesting when I started to do this process and really looked at like, well, you know, the user of the product, which is mm. me. Um, hmm. I was like, I have this business. I like have these coaches that are working for me. I have this team. I have this like giant, um, like monthly net. Um, 
I'm barely even coaching. I'm just managing people. You know, I'm just doing like visionary stuff. Um, but I, I realized um, in this letting go process, if I let go of what other people think or what I'm supposed to do, what do, what do I really, what is the lifestyle business that I really want to have? Mm. Um, and that was very different. And, and so the scariest thing I did was uh, fire everyone and like set, you know, set a little bomb off um, and uh, change it up. And so it was really freeing. It was very, very scary, but it was, uh, it was a good, it was good. I had to really, again, look at like, what, what did I really want to create? Cause Marnie, we're talking about, you know, like a multi seven figure business here, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you, and, and it's not to diminish any other, other value of businesses, but you know, when you've got lots of people working for you, people can often think, well, I'm in too deep. Right. Like I, cause no doubt if you have a multi seven figure business, you have also a multi seven figure life, right? Like you have a life that, that has lived up to that kind of level of dollar value that you're expecting to income to have. And so <clears throat> who did you need to become? You know, the internal, I can see what you've done externally. Like you, you know, you let go of the, the team members, you downsized at all the things by choice, which a lot of people would sit there and go, you're crazy. You made it. You know, the coaches around the world want to be a multi seven figure business and have all this stuff. I'm sure that you got a lot of pushback from people and I'm going to go into, into more questions around that, but I'm really curious as to who you needed to become in order to make that choice. Like what had to shift internally in order for that to happen? Um, I had to know that I'm capable. I had to start to trust my own intuition that I did know the answers and that I did know what I wanted. Um, and mm. that I, I, I really made it very clear. Like I want a life that is in alignment with my core values and my priorities and that I want to, um, have the courage. So I had to be brave, right. To, mm. to start making those changes. Um, so I had to become, um, rigorous in questioning every single assumption about what things had to look like. I mean, even when I changed my business and I was looking at like, um, a process for like, how do I onboard people or what platform do I use or whatever it was, I was like, why am I using this? Like, did someone mm. tell me I should use it? Um, you know, do I love it? Is there a more simple way? I remember the first time I uh, was going to offer a program and the old way was like, you have to do the videos and you have to make this like website and you have to, you know, do all the stuff. And I was like, someone was like, put it on a Google doc. I was like, really? <laughs> um, but I, so how, who did I have to become? I had to be, I had to become, um, a confident, confident enough in like my belief system to know that like, if I mm. was just being authentic and I pushed myself in a loving way to just express my soul in every area of my life, um, then I was going to have a more joyful freedom based life. And so mm. that's sort of the nutshell is like, I learned really at the core of like, who am I when I'm expressing my authentic self in every area of my life? And now how do I, how do I break through or get rid of or become more of me? Um, it's not mm. like up leveling. It was like an in leveling and then outward expressing. Ooh. That was really the, that was the, really the, the journey. An in leveling and an outward expression of that. That's so powerful and in leveling and an outward expression of it. This is not about just reaching and pushing and driving and striving to the next thing because that is what your industry or that's what the the pathway is. It's about what is really true for me and and what do I actually want, you know, because, because people go, well, of course you'd want a multi-seven-figure business. Who doesn't want that? And it's like, can can I adjust the way that I live my life to change the way because with a multi seven big seven figure business comes with a certain kind of lifestyle. 
Well, yeah. Here's, that- well, yeah. So here's what's really cra- here's what's really crazy. What? Uh, yes, a hundred percent. But I think the things that people don't talk about is um, that when you have a certain level of revenue, then you also have a certain level ex- of expenses, right? And so once I was like, wait, totally. If I got rid of all this stuff and I charged this and I did it like this, wouldn't I kind of take home the same amount of money or more? Wow. With less, with less stress. Um, and that definitely, that happened. Um, now, here's the other thing. I think this is really important piece is that um, I really got clear on what is essential Um, There's a great book Mm. called Essentialism by Greg McKeown. I read that and I was like, wow, this isn't really just about like uh, uh, simplism or minimalism or, you know, Mm. I'm going to live with like one stick of furniture and one coffee cup. Um, It's really about like learning what is what do I need and what do I want? And need mm. isn't just like bare bones, like get through it survival. So by like newsflash need is like, what do I really need to feel like I am expressing myself that I am um, living the kind of life that um, just feels good. Right. And in those experiments, you know, uh, and living in 40 feet, uh, in an RV, right. Mm-hmm. That experience. Um, we even rented a, uh, we decided to, we sold the RV and we moved to Colorado to test out living in this one town where we are. And we even were like, well, maybe we, we should question that we need X amount of space and that we could actually really thrive in a smaller space. Um, that's mm-hmm. a more simple sort of vibe which was a great experiment. But after doing that and doing something else, we're like, actually, no, what I need is this. And so I think that when you are privileged enough to have a certain life, the word need Mm. gets really confused. Um, Does. Right. And there's like basic need. uh, there's a There's basic day- human need compared to a soul need, uh, a need of my personality, a need of my, and a need of my like rhythm. My my th- need to thrive is very different than need to survive. Exactly, and so in midlife, like starting with a blank slate and really asking yourself, like, so what do I need now? I mean, I you know mm. I and and mm. not assuming that. Um, and so that has been a really, um, a really fun process. And so my lifestyle really, um, it didn't really change. It's just that what I, it, well, my expenses went down dramatically in a lot of different ways, but really what I really choose to, to use my money for has changed in, in dramatically in different sorts mm. of ways. And, and so what I realized is I look at that life that I had in LA and the business that I had, it was very much driven by like, you know, um, a lot of things that were masks, you know, they weren't really who I was. Mm. They were just Mm. trying to heal things from, uh, a past, you know, of not being accepted or not belonging or having scarcity. I was like, let me just fill it up with all the stuff. And that'll make, and and then, but that's, that doesn't work. That's not a long-term strategy. Newsflash, newsflash, just a spoiler alert for everybody. It will not lead you where you think it's going to lead you. Getting everything you've ever wanted from that ego space, from that like surface level mind space will not lead you to the deep connection that you want to feel within to live authentically, to live, to live truthfully to your own purpose. You're not going to get that through the chasing of things and stuff and accolades and, and you know, the light, the, the shoulds, right? What I love that you yeah, that you've and, said he, said yeah. here, money. Yeah, what I love that you've said here that I want everybody to really hear loud and clearly is that is that you you questioned all your assumptions and what what you know that I mean my language would be like you questioned your beliefs, you questioned what you believed to be true, what was you know that you needed to live in a certain amount of space, and now it doesn't mean that when you question that 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 belief or that assumption will necessarily be proved incorrect. It might be proved correct, 
But if we've never gone and figured it out, because we've just assumed, well, we need to actually test the assumptions. Let's go test it out. And you might find nuances. Okay, cool. So I don't actually need that much space, but I do need this amount of space because that small amount of space was too small and I feel constrained and I don't get to express myself in the way that's true when my husband is breathing down my neck three feet away from me. Too close. Uh, Exactly. So, and I think this is, so in the design model, this is prototyping, right? So before they build like the big thing, right? They do a lot of prototyping, right? So what we do in life design is Mm. we we do a lot of experiments Um, and we don't try things out just saying, do I like it or I don't like it? We are actually testing hypotheses, right? Like, will this allow me to have um, uh, a sense of... um, of flexibility. So that was, so in the cabin, we rented a cabin. It was out in nature. We were testing a lot of different things. We were testing, like, do we like living out of town? Do we like living in a more rural area? Um, Do we Mm -hmm. need, do we really need less space? Do we love having a lower rent because we have more freedom and flexibility to not give a shit if we're there or not, right? Like all of these kinds of things. Yeah, nice. Right? And so, um, so we tested all those things, right? It wasn't just like, hmm, Maybe I would like to live in a little in the country in a small house. Do I like it or do I not like it? Um, so because the reason is then when you when you do a prototype and you are really testing a hypothesis and you are looking at questions, you have data then to continue, right, to adjust and make a new decision. Um, and that helps you make mm. decisions moving forward, right? And so uh, when you just go, eh. I liked it. Do you like it? I don't know. Do you like it better? I don't know. What do you like about it? I don't know. Right. It, it, you're not really moving forward. Um, and you're not learning anything about yourself. So when you're doing these experiments, right, which are like scaled down ideas of something that maybe you want to do in a bigger way, you don't just Mm -hmm. say, did I like it? You say, this is what I'm testing. This is what I'm trying to find out. And that way you design the experiment to answer those questions which is fun. Wow. Yes. And and also what it does, Marty, from what I'm hearing, it takes the pressure off outcomes. You know, I think that really what scares people about, particularly the older that we get, is is that we move away from experimentation. It's like, cool, I'm quitting my nine to five. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine just recently. She's been wanting to get out of her corporate job for a long time, you know, and then she's got to make the business work. You know, like she wants to go out on her own and move into business. And I'm like, hang on a second here. That might not be for you, right? And I'm not, I don't want to diminish you. I want you to like, don't take the pressure of yourself that you have to go make entrepreneurship work. It's very different. You've been in corporate. You've you've had a job with secure income for 20 years. Maybe the insecurity of entrepreneurship, which is what's required, right, isn't for you. Maybe it is. Maybe you flourish. Maybe you thrive. But let's experiment rather than now you have to be a business owner for forevermore. I'm always open to this. I'm like, cool. If something comes along where someone gives me, you know, a job opportunity comes up that is fantastic that allows me to be in my genius and and stay with where I'm at, okay. Like I, I think that having the 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 beginner's mindset or the creator's mindset yes. means that we're not like i have to marry it exactly. just because we're trying it on for size exactly and in this process of really discovering like your soul map um there's a lot of things that get buried or forgotten about what we loved in life or what we liked or what we were good at um because mm. life and experience like mm. and the shoulds kind of like suck it out of you Um, so I have a client that I'm working with. Here's a great example who was in corporate for a lot of different reasons. She left. She was like, I'm going to open my own business. Right. Um, she's like, why am I so unhappy? This was like the dream, you know, like leave the corporate job, have the freedom. Um, and we started kind of doing this work and we're looking at her soul map and going through the design thinking process. And there's some things that she would really like to explore um, in shifting what she's doing, um, based on the data that she's collected, because I now have just said this business that you started as an experiment, it it wasn't like, and now I'm doing this and forever. And if I decide to change it or do something different, that mean it failed. 
no. failed. Didn't, Correct. Didn't fail, right? Mm. So we're so I'm like, what are you excited about? So we did so we did the process, right? We went, we talked about her soul map, we did some ideation. Um, and the other day she was like, Wow, I was thinking about all these experiments that I could design. Um, and I feel really excited about my my life. Like I haven't felt excited about anything in so long, right? And fantastic. And when it's aligned with your core values and your core motivation, like what you're doing is what you love, how you do it, mm -hmm. right? Like how you set it up is really important because you can do something a task or an idea, but the, how it's set up isn't a match. Mm -hmm. And I don't want people to think, oh, well, then I shouldn't do that thing. Maybe how you need to do it can be different, right? So you're looking for your, what you do, how you do it best and, and your core motivation and getting that all aligned. And well, when, when, mm -hmm. when you do that, um, it's like you're flying, right? Because you're all gas, no brakes. Um, and that's when ease comes in where it feels like flow and you start to, um, be excited about possibility rather than the old way, which is, should I do this or should I do that? Yes, because even with that, it's binary thinking, isn't it? It's this or that it's corporate or business. And it's like, well, you know, what if, like, let's explore the possibilities. Yeah. What, what's, what's open. What, like when we talk about life by design, it's exactly that. And I love this about like designing experiments. I, I can feel even within myself, I'm like, Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on this book. I want to read it. I, and I don't say, I don't, I don't say that just because you're on my show. I'm genuinely feel, feel that that's, you know, wow. I want to know this methodology. Can we, um, is there previews around this? Do you have podcasts? Do you have places that we can go to learn more about your thinking and your model or, or around this before the book comes out? Uh, yeah. So one thing that um, people can do is they can go to um, instituteforlivingcourageously.com. And what mm -hmm. I put together is um, a, like an assessment slash quiz um, about like your dream life and are you living your dream life now? So you can kind of see if I give you a new definition with these seven questions that you can start mm -hmm. to assess uh, how far are you away from like adopting a new success model that will actually start to give you a meaningful life. And these seven questions can help you start reorienting your thinking away from your bank account and your car and all those things that you think are supposed to make you mm. happy um, and start getting a new way of looking at what really is a meaningful life. Yes. So I'm going to put that in the show notes. It's the Institute for Living Courageously.com. It'll be in the show notes. You'll be able to connect in with Marnie, who's, you know, an entrepreneur, an author, a transformational life design specialist. She also has her own podcast and a radical truth seeker. And that's what I really love about you, Marnie, and, and what you bring to the world because you're honest, relatable, you're down to earth. You deliver that in your podcast, your writing, and not only inspire insights, but also laughter. And I think that you have this, you know, you share from your radically life-changing stories of your own triumph and love and your mission to help women harness that courage that you've harnessed for yourself to stop letting life live them and start living a life that's beyond their wildest dreams is something that just the world needs. And I love that you know, you've done incredible things like being on, you know, you've be, appeared in the LA Times and the New Yorker and the Dr. Phil show on air with Ryan Seacrest, Home and Family TV. You've done a lot already and this message is going to just continue to grow and expand. We can find you obviously there for at the at instituteforlivingcourageously.com. I'm guessing that somewhere we might be able to pre-order or put ourselves on a list to be able to get your book once it's ready to come out. Is that right? Yes. And once we get all of that set up, uh, you'll just, uh, we'll send it, we'll have it on the website and it'll, it'll be there to get on the presale, presale list. Cause we're recording this like yes. so far in advance and I'm like getting everything together and it's really, it's so exciting. It's been, it was a dream to, it's really interesting. You know, like I've wanted to write and publish a book traditionally for a really long time. I mean, since I started my business, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it's mm. an accident that the 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 ability to get this out really hit when I, my soul was most aligned, right? Like with my actual mission, not Perfect. what everyone told me to do. So you have dreams inside mm. of you that you don't even know can get fulfilled, uh, but it's not too late. 
Yes, yes. Oh, this is brilliant. We can also find you on Instagram too, is that right? Marnie Batista underscore. Man, Marnie Batista underscore. And again, that's going to be in the show notes. So it's been such a joy and I feel like there's so many more questions that I want to dive into with you, Marnie. So there might be a an opportunity for us to connect again on this podcast or perhaps you and I need to jam again, me on yours. Yes, something along those for lines. sure. For sure. I was already it's a synergy. That. I know. Good. I love that. Great minds, great minds, great hearts. It's fabulous. It's so fantastic to hear, to hear your message and what you're putting out there in the world. Just keep rocking on. Thank you. Before we close up for today's conversation, what I would love to know, if, if you could wrap up living life by design in just five words, sentence or otherwise, what would those five words be? Courage, intention, faith, radical honesty, and fun. Mm. Courage, intention, faith, radical honesty. Is that the last one? I think I may have no. missed it. Yeah. Courage, fun. intention, fun. faith. Fun. Radical fun. fun. I love it. Gotta have fun. Yes. Gotta play. Gotta have fun. If we're not having fun, let's play. Because isn't creation about play? Isn't that imagination? Yeah. Isn't play where it all comes from? Rather than seriousness of I've got to get something done. Yeah, oh, for it's sure. Fabulous. I highly recommend everybody to go check out the Institute for Living Courageously dot com. Go do this, uh, you know, do do this questionnaire, this quiz to see how close you are to living your life by design and how you might be able to transform your life through the work that Marnie does. Yeah. It's been such a joy having you here. Thank you so much. And yeah. uh, until next time, ladies and gents, tuning in on here. Of course, you can. Get any of my books, Get Happy and Free, my most recent book, as well as Perfectly Imperfect, your complete guide to loving yourself and loving your body. Listen to podcast episodes, share this around. There's only about 2% of you that are currently subscribed to the, sh- to the channel. And the more that you subscribe, the more that you like, the more that you share this, the more that we can spread this beautiful message and more people get to live a life that is truly aligned with their soul map, as Marnie would say. So thank you for being here, Marnie. Thank you for being here, listeners, and um, may God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening to the More Confidence with Luna Guy podcast. I hope you feel more confident, more self-assured, and ready to go tackle the world's problems and maybe kick ass in some of your dreams. If you haven't already, I would love for you to like and subscribe, follow, and maybe leave a review so that other people know how to find this awesome podcast too. If you're wanting to sink your teeth into something even more juicy, my number one best-selling book, Perfectly Imperfect, Your Complete Guide to Loving Yourself and Loving Your Body is now available on all good bookstore sites, both in print, digital, and I narrated it for Audible as well. If you think the coaching or maybe one of my courses is for you, why not head to www.moreconfidence.com.au and get in touch and see if we can talk. And of course, you can find me all across the social medias. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, which is where you're probably listening now, or maybe even here on the podcast platform. Sending you big love and wishing you a beautiful day.